Welcome to this uh, our New Year service uh, for the beginning of 2022 and we've got a lot to be joyful about. There's a lot of sad things in the world but they've got a lot to be happy about as well, a lot to celebrate in our faith. So let's start by approaching the Lord with prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, in Christ Jesus you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory. This we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Well, it's good to praise God and we're going to start with a hymn uh, 279 Make Way Make Way Now we turn to the Lord again in prayer and we ask for God's guidance in this new year. Let us pray. Creator God and Holy Spirit, who in the beginning hovered over the waters and at Jesus' baptism descended in the form of a dove, come to us, open our hearts and minds, 
so that we too may hear your life-giving word and be renewed by the power of the Spirit. Father God, your Son shared the life of his home and family at Nazareth. We give thanks for his presence with us in our homes and in our lives. Guide us in our relationships with family and neighbours, especially those in trouble or in need, and bless those who have guided and enriched our own lives. Gracious God, we pray for the sick, who, because of their latitude or pain, find it difficult to pray. May they be aware of our prayers on their behalf, and accept graciously the support and love of their family and friends, and those within the church. Mercifully, God, we pray for those who are dying and those who have already completed their life's journey here on earth. May they rest in peace and rise to glory. Holy God, we thank you for helping us to pray. Deepen our appreciation of your creation so that as we go about our busy lives, we may do so with eyes wide open to the richness and colour of our surroundings and the vibrant variety of the people we live amongst. Merciful Father, accept these prayers we offer for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Well, we do well to look to Scripture for our inspiration, and our first reading is from the Old Testament from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 43, reading from verse 1 to verse 7. But now, this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead, since you are precious and honoured in my sight, and because I love you. I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for your glory, whom I formed and made. Thanks be to God for this, his holy word, as delivered through his prophet Isaiah. Now, we're all called to follow Jesus, and our next hymn celebrates this, hymn 533, Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know?
look at the New Testament. Our Gospel reading is from Luke chapter 3 verses 15 to 22. Luke 3, 15 to 22. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. But when John rebuked Herod, the Tetrarch, because of his marriage to Herodias, his brother's wife, and all the other evil things he had done, Herod added this to them all. He locked John up in prison. When all the people were being baptised, Jesus was baptised too, and as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form, like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love, with you I am well pleased. Thanks be to God. Well, let's look at the meaning of our readings today and see what they, they really mean for us in, in our day and age, but also what they meant at the time. So looking mainly at Isaiah 43, we start a new year and actually we start a new life in Jesus, a fresh life. And we can start it joyfully. We could, we could be sad about all the things that are going on in the world, the pandemic, um, the suffering due largely to greed. And, but far too many Christians perhaps myself included, uh, lack joy on their faces. We should wear joyful faces if we've got joy in our hearts, joy in our lives. So many Christians seem to think that to be truly spiritual, one must wear a sad face, like Holy Willy in Burns's parody. Uh, well, maybe there are times to be serious, but generally we should be joyful, and it's good to be joyful at the start of a new year. Many Christians allow life's troubles and other people's insensitivity and misunderstandings to hinder their joy. It seems like some have forgotten just how what Jesus has done for them and given them a new life. But since Christ has freely given us everything, we ought to break forth joyfully, especially at a new year. 
Now, the verses we read from Isaiah were primarily directed for the nation of Israel at, at that time. They were carted away in exile. Uh, they were being punished by a foreign power. Uh, God allowed a foreign power to invade them and carry them away in exile to Babylon. So let's have a look at that. Um, for three generations at least they turned their backs on God and they lost their way and so God left them to their own devices and inevitably and very swiftly they were taken away from the promised land but some years later God is promising to sustain his children, to deliver them from their captivity and their exile, and to change the way he has dealt with them. In fact, God is giving them a promise that he's going to treat them differently and bring them into a new relationship or a new covenant. In the past, they have turned their backs on God and their inevitable punishment was to experience life without God, life in a godless Babylonian empire. Life in exile from the promised land. There's a tremendous relevance here for you and me today in, in these verses. We encounter promises that are designed to cause us to live joyfully in a new day. You can live in a new and wonderful day because you have a past. Most of us have a past and we would rather forget some of the things we've done in the past. I know I wish I could undo some of the hurts that I may have given someone in the past and um, there's nothing to brag about. If only there were some things we could change about our past that would make us a little closer to God, make our present uh, life seem more wonderful. The Israelites' past wasn't so great. They had turned away from God. They had lost everything their land, their homes, their livelihood, and the manifest presence of God. They weren't even free to worship. They were living outside of the promises of God. And God kept them there for two and a half generations, maybe three generations, for 70 years of exile. But now... Not tomorrow, not in two weeks, not in months or years to come, but now. God says things are going to change. Fear not is the prophecy. God says you don't have to be concerned. You don't have to worry or be anxious about your situation because I have not left you. Even though we go through the storm, God is still with us. Do not fear for your health. Isn't that a wonderful message at, at this time of pandemic? Do not fear for your health because by Jesus' stripes we are healed. And God will not call us home one day sooner than he has planned. Do not worry about your bank account because God shall supply all of your needs. Do not fear for what that devil, Satan, is coming against you with. Because greater by far is the Spirit of God. And in fact, God can call upon the might of some powerful angels to chase away anything dark or demonic in our lives and people do need help from God the holiness of God 
whose fiery presence once called forth an army of mighty angels. So you may have a shoddy, uh, a dark or horrible past, but God wants you to focus on his wonderful future because God can redeem you. God can redeem your whole past, all those sorry sins God can wipe away. So we're going to look at three things that God has done for every believer, every believer in Jesus. He has redeemed us. We are saved because nearly 2,000 years ago, before we were even born, the Lord Jesus willingly died to save our souls. And that happened, we believe, in the year 33 AD. His grace has forgiven us and saved us. The second point is when God said that he called people by name, he knew exactly who they were. God can look into our very hearts and our most secret thoughts. And when those people became faithful to God, he changed their name because he changed their whole character. For example, Jacob, the deceiver, was changed to Israel, prince with God. Avram, the high father, was changed to Abraham, the father of a multitude. When Saul came to Jesus Christ, he became Paul, the greatest of the apostles. And when we came to Jesus, recently or in our past he did the same thing he gave us a new character and he he called us from being lost sinners and children of wrath to being called children of god saints citizens of heaven that's something to celebrate and so we enter a new year with this positive feeling in our hearts. The third point I want to make is God's acceptance, acceptance of us with grubby hands. I remember as a child at school we were, weren't allowed into the school um, canteen unless we went and washed our hands and we had our grubby hands inspected and, and we weren't worthy to go into the canteen unless we had clean hands. Well, God welcomes us even with our grubby hands and he accepts us. And we are his and we are his alone. Jesus Christ has taken possession of our lives and now we belong to him. And no power in the universe can change that. So at the start of a new year, we need to take a moment to reflect, look back and see where Jesus has brought us from. And we should be encouraged to look forward and with that good news, be able to worship and praise him regardless of what is happening in the world and we can be joyful and positive for the whole year ahead knowing that God travels with us. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn, 334, celebrates the ministry of John the Baptist, the one who made way for the Lord, who the one who prepared the way for the Lord and brought people in a, in a, in a road across the desert wilderness to the Jordan River. 
or on Jordan's bank, the Baptists cry. Now let us return to the Lord in prayer and this time our prayers for others and the needs of those who suffer the most in the world. Let us pray. Lord God, as we begin this new year, we remember that your son Jesus was born into our world and lived among us. We bring you our hopes and dreams, confident that you will accompany us throughout the coming year. As 2022 begins, we pray for leaders in government and communities across the world. May they cooperate in peace and an ever greater understanding of the real needs of the people they are called to serve. Bless all who suffer in body, mind or spirit and bring them at the last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. As 2022 begins, we pray for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. May God bless and reward all those who have generously given of themselves to support others in their time of need. We pray particularly for all health service workers who took great risks for their own safety and their families' safety. And we pray also for all care workers who have done the same. In 2022, we pray for the victims of oppression and injustice in their own countries. May all migrants and refugees find a place of security and a future of hope. We pray for people who face job insecurity in the current global economic upheaval. May they find work, fair wages and a hope-filled future. We pray for Elizabeth, our anointed queen, that she may continue to lead our nation in peace and stability and supported by her faith in our Saviour. As 2022 begins, we pray for families. May their love for each other grow throughout the coming year, touching the hearts of all with whom they come in contact. Lord, hear our prayers, which we trustfully bring before you. May you lead us through the unfolding days of this new year. 
And now in the words that Jesus taught us to pray, let us pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. Well, let us uh, conclude our service with yet another hymn of praise. There have been one or two storms uh, in the sea nearby, big waves. And of course we think about seafarers having to risk their lives uh, to bring food to the table, the fishermen, uh, and so. But we also realize that we face storms in life and the Lord is with us. So we can hold on to an anchor in the storm. Our anchor is Jesus. Hymn 737, Will Your Anchor Hold? Now let us ask for God's blessing on our lives as we return to our daily routine. Let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with your word through Jesus, the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that through us the light of your glory may shine to others in the world. And so, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us this day and throughout the year. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us and I look forward to being back with you soon. <laughs>